Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the Prague Chess Festival 2020. It's quite strong tournament where 6 out of 10 players are um, ranked uh, above 2700. And uh, number one uh, on the list was Jan Krzysztof Duda from Poland. He is 21 years old uh, and his ranking is 2750. Five, and it gives him the 16th place in the world and he play as white in this game and his opponent is a uh, famous Alireza Firuzia and he is famous because uh, he is a teenager he's 16 years old and he is from Iran and his ranking is already 2726 he play a uh, very impressive uh, games and he is actually considered to be 23rd in the world and and uh, for example, in the last interview, Vishwanathan Anand uh, talked about Alireza Firuzia and he said um, that Firuzia is um, very talented and he can create uh, something, some very strong initiative and um, an attack out of nothing. So um, this is uh, pretty impressive stuff in the age of 16. So by many people, he is considered to be the, you know, future the world champion. We will see what will happen with his career, but uh, without further ado, let's jump uh, to the game where he play as black against uh, number one ranked in this tournament, Jan Krzysztof Duda. White opens with c4, so English opening, we have c6 by Firuzia, knight f3, d5. So this is Karokan defensive system uh, to the English opening and Karokan can be played um, against um, e4 uh, and then continuation um, d4, but as you see against the uh, English opening is also possible. We have e3 by Duda, knight f6 by Firuzia, uh, knight c3, e6 creating this um, very solid pawn structure and here we have b3 bishop on d6 by Firuzia, bishop b2 fianchetto the bishop and castle uh, by Firuzia. queen on c2 and here uh, Firuzia said that he doesn't like this queen on c2 and probably do the um, mess up the order of the of the moves however uh, this was played uh, before uh, quite some times, uh, but Firuzia play e5, so um, quite active move. And here we have bishop on e2. Um, actually, the main line here in this opening would be c takes on d5, c takes on d5, and now knight on b5 attacking the bishop. And um, th this would be quite uh, quite strong move uh, because after knight on c6, uh, knight can take on d6, queen d6, and then d4 is possible. And after e4, this knight on e5 would be very very happy knight. Of course, it can't be taken because then uh, black would lose um, the minor piece. Uh, so so that would be the the very good continuation however duda play bishop on e2 and um, it's not really the best and now it's invitation for black to play e4 however before duda played that and two years ago his opponent strike uh, bishop on g4 um, and then Duda plays C takes on D5 and C takes on D5. So he knows this, this continuation, but then Knight on G5. Uh, and this is quite interesting line. After Bishop on E2, White actually can win the pawn on D5. And that was, was played two years ago. After, of course, uh, Knight can't be taken because checkmate on H7. So knight b on d7 was played, uh, king on e2, rook c8 attacking the, the queen, but queen d3, h6 uh, kicking out the knight, but knight can't be kicked because h4. And now, of course, the, the knight can't be taken um, because the, there would be some mating ideas here. Um, so um, rook e8 was played and then uh, white just simplified the, the position knight f6 knight f6 and now knight on e4 uh, and after knight e4 and queen on e4 queen d7 defending b7 was played 
and Duda got a uh, much better position with um, extra pawn so um, so that that's the idea what he had in the mind and he definitely knew what he is doing the problem is uh, Firuja, I don't know, that would, that could be the preparation against Duda or he just feel that in this position, come on, e4 is a very strong move and um, Duda actually should play knight on d4 knight on d4 wouldn't be so bad and of course uh, c5 uh, would be too early because of uh, bishop on b5 and uh, that, that would be okay for white uh, so a6 would have to be prepared and and probably bishop on d1 making a space for the for the knight that would be still playable for for white however not so strong uh, so duda play knight on g5 because he remember his position and uh, probably he made the analysis but for this move um, actually he took some time and it took him quite long so he was not sure if uh, with the pawn on e4 so without the queen attacking on h7 it's still possible to play this line but after h six he actually played h4 so uh, he just continue with the same uh, fashion and now if h takes on g5 uh, then we would have hg5 knight can go uh, wherever knight h7 is the best here but then f4 f4 would be very strong of course it can't be taken because of checkmate on h7 uh, so, for example, knight on d7 um, by black and uh, and white have many ways to continue. The most effective probably would be knight takes on e4. Uh, and after d takes on e4 and queen takes on e4, actually white would have extremely strong um, attack here. Uh, the bishop could join, the rook of course is attacking and if the if, if it's not enough pieces white always can castle and uh, bring another attacker um to the party so that would be devastating for black so um definitely it couldn't be played uh black can't take on g5 uh so firuja just play rook on e8 very silent move and very strong move now this rook defending that is an extra defender to e4 so now any tactics with knight on e4 are impossible to 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 create after and now actually h takes on g5 is possible it's not the best move uh, but it's possible so for example if white decide let's say the castle on the queen side uh, not really recommended taking the knight it's not the the strongest move but it's still possible to play uh, because now a knight can go on g4 with some um, some threats rook h4 attacking the knight knight can go uh, still on f2 and of course uh, the rook can go to h1 but can attack the the knight uh, and knight can't go back the problem is the queen can go on g5 uh, and then yeah queen can be attacked but uh, but then black would have just um, easily winning position and um, and that would be very very bad for for white this is why knight on h3 was played duda just calculated okay i have nothing uh, i have nothing here so i have to play um, i have to retreat and from this moment firuja got all the initiative uh, and he started to develop his pieces knight a6 was played and a3 a3 actually take um, away the the b4 uh, from the knight and uh, firuja told okay this this knight is quite unhappy uh, how to make him happy the engine recommends knight on c7 uh, or bishop on uh, g4 however firuja wanted to make the knight happy first so he played d takes on c4 he messed up the, his pawn structure he had a very beautiful chain but he wanted to make the knight happy so uh, we have bishop on c4 b takes on c4 was also possible but this um, this pawn would be 
um, difficult to defend as um, the pawn on d2 is behind and uh, um, e4 pawn is, is, is very annoying and controls um, d3 square. So a bishop takes on c4, we have b5 kicking the bishop, bishop back to e2 and now b4, b4 uh, attacking the knight and also attacking the, the pawn. So have to do something. If a takes on b4, now this knight would be very, very happy attacking the queen. Queen would have to move in the passive place and then uh, the game would continue. Of course, the, the black would be much better here. So do the play knight on d1. Um, and now b takes on a3. Bishop takes on a3 and now knight b4. So now this knight uh, become very happy knight. Uh, attacks the queen but also uh, in some lines after for example a5 um, and uh, bishop on a6. Uh, this knight could be very annoying on d3. That would be very beautiful outpost uh, for the minor piece. Uh, so uh, if the knight is too happy, better to just capture him. What do that did bishop on b4? And now we have bishop on b4 and g3 by Duda. It's difficult to find the plan for white. Actually, black has a lot of initiative and black has a lot of space. What is even more important and whatever plan for white, it's very difficult. So. Um, the king is still in the center. It could probably uh, castle, but but it would be very, very difficult game. And for example, now they can't castle, of course, because um, the d2 pawn is hanging uh, because it's attacked twice. So that's impossible for now. So g3 first. And now if black play, for example, bishop on f5, which is recommended by the engine as the strongest move, um, it would give white actually the chances to consolidate the position. Knight on f4 and uh, after knight on d5, uh, we would have knight b2 with the plan uh, of going to c4. So for example, a5, knight c4 and these two knights would be quite strong in the center. Um, this is why it's, it's of course slightly better for black, but Firuja didn't want um, to make it happen so easily. So first he play quite aggressive knight on g4 and knight on g4, of course, it can't be taken because um, then black would have the control on the light squares and uh, light squares here are, are very weak. So um, that would be very, very bad for white. And also one more thing, uh, this square belongs to the queen. So queen now can go on f6 attack the, uh, the pawn on f2, that's one thing, but also uh, attack undefended uh, rook on a1, very strong move on f6. So rook a2 has to be played. Uh, and also this is uh, one good thing about rook a2, it also defends um, the backward pawn on d2. Uh, we have queen f6 as planned. And now king on f1. So uh, the plan is to move the king to g2. And uh, for example, if now white would like to play um, the castle, it's uh, really, really not recommended because now after knight on e5, that would be the threat. Uh, so for example, knight on f4, uh, still knight f3, uh, very dangerous attack now. Uh, some sacrifice could be done. Uh, g5 could be played, uh, so it would be very dangerous. So white would have to exchange uh, this bishop for the knight. And now uh, without a light square bishop, black would have very strong attack um, on the on the king side. So uh, king f1 was played uh, and uh, we have bishop on f5 now. And maybe this is the moment where white would try to remaneuver the, the knight because after moving the bishop, the point is that the rooks are start to play. So for example, rook can go on d8 and now have attack on d2, uh, which is very dangerous. So 
uh, knight b2 would be the option and after rook a on d8 uh, now this is under attack d2 is under attack so uh, knight can go on c4 defending and after a5 because it was of course attacked by the by the rook king g2 Black are still better, but white have, uh, you know, can get this position, which is probably the optimal position uh, for white with the, with the knight on f4. Uh, however, Duda play king on g2. And now uh, knight doesn't have a time to go on c4 because rook a on d8 is played first. So uh, without a5, uh, because now, of course, a7 can't be taken because uh, this is very devastating. Uh, now, white would just probably lose the minor piece and then got the very strong attack. So, um, knight on c3 has to be played, blocking the attack on d2 uh, temporarily. Uh, and now e5, uh, so defending this, this pawn by moving it forward. Knight f4, so uh, white reached the outpost, um, so this is what they achieved, but that's not enough. We have queen on e5, uh, and now again, it's very, very difficult to play as white. Uh, black has many plans, and black can play uh, anything, and, and a lot of plans are just good, and white would have the problem. So, for example, h5. Uh, could be played uh, and after rook on d6 this is the the most obvious plan for for black of course double the rooks on the d file we could have rook on h4 kicking this knight uh, but knight f6 queen c1 now uh, bringing a defender uh, to d2 not only by the queen but also by the rook uh, we would have rook e on d8 and uh, and it would be, it's still, you know, white has very, very passive position and this rook on h4, uh, it's really far from the action. It's probably nothing to do for the, for the rook. Uh, not really great. Um, so th that's one of the plans which probably wouldn't work. This is why rook on c1 was played. Rook on c1 with the plan of um, defending c3 but also giving the opportunity to strike on c6 uh, in the future uh, because d2 pawn is gonna probably fall so um, do that try to play something active uh, and here we have rook on d6 as planned and here duda found a way for himself so queen on d1 quite interesting move uh, and now this rook actually defend d2 which maybe is not enough but the battery uh, now attacking the knight so knight have to be moved on f6 and now we have h5 and h5 creates some problems and attacking chances for white now white can actually push this pawn and devastate the position of black the problem is that black can be faster with rook on d8 now after taking the knight uh, these rooks would be devastating on the open d file so knight on b1 has to be played um, white can't lose this this knight uh, and defending d2 even even more and here uh, this attack is very dangerous so g5 has to be played h pawn takes on g6 f takes on g6 and now queen on h1 so now trying to attack h6 uh, king g7 of course defending and now knight on a3 so now uh, Duda has a very sad knight so knight on a3 and also trying to make him happy but every happy uh, knight should be, you know, captured as fast as possible. So Firuja captured this knight as well. And we have rook on a3. And now that's the problem. Queen on b2 uh, gonna be the problem for the rest of the game. Mostly as a threat. And usually it can be played. Um, because uh, black will always be like one tempo uh, behind. Uh, but still have enough initiative to, to, you know, to win the game. 
uh, but white have to consider uh, this queen b2 all the time and, and calculate this uh, all the times and now Firuzia just kicked the knight so um, knight on h5 exchanging the knights and bishop on h5 uh, and here we have rook on d2 so this this pawn was uh, impossible to defend and now the thing is that both of the players has only six minutes on the clock and it's move 34 so still six uh, or even seven moves to make and what white should play and they are very very low on time queen on e1 is the strongest move and after queen on b2 obviously rook e5 can be played and then rook f2 would be very strong queen f2 and now if rook on d2 actually that's not the the move you we are looking for if rook on d2 and um, then rook a7 king h8 rook a8 check king g7 and now rook f1 just defend the queen bishop e6 so attacking the uh, b3 but also after that uh, the rook can be attacked so that would be very very dangerous rook a7 we check king h8 bishop on g6 and for example bishop on g8 and this way or another white would find a way uh, to actually force black to to exchange this um, this rook uh, rook f2 would have to be played rook f2 and now uh, queen has to go on a3 uh, if queen go on b3 of course it's losing uh, now the position is better for white believe me or not but this is better for white this is why uh, queen e1 could be very 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 strong especially both of the players don't have time to calculate uh, if queen on b3 of course rook f8 and then uh, checkmate is coming and uh, that would be undefendable so um and not really great idea so uh queen on eight three would have to be play and uh, control f8 uh, square however after queen on f2 uh, actually this the uh, rook on d2 don't need to be played bishop h3 is much stronger move and now after king on g1 uh, queen c1 king h2 and only now rook on d2 that would be much stronger bishop e2 would be possible now bishop on g4 attacking the the bishop rook a7 and black has to be very careful because now this queen can uh, you know uh, do some checkmate so bishop on d7 and black would stand uh, slightly better but white would still have very very dangerous um, attacks so um, both sides uh, would have to be very careful and white would have also another possibility after bishop on h3 actually this bishop could be taken as well uh, and after queen on f2 rook a7 um, also king g8 and now rook c7 uh, queen f5 uh, bishop g4 queen f2 uh, bishop h5 queen e3 uh, and now rook 1 to c6 and uh, and the position is of course slightly better for black uh, but that's that's the best what what white could get so this position or this position uh, would be possible to achieve uh, for white probably this would be more dangerous and um, and yeah mm, that was um, the possibility here uh this queen on e1 as the strongest move but but as i said uh six minutes on the clock and still uh seven moves to do uh so do that just recapture um the pawn on c6 and that's actually uh the blunder but it's not easy to find the way for black how to continue the game and there is only one decisive move uh, which black uh, you know can um, can win the game so feel free to pause the video now and try to find the winning uh, move for black while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so queen on b2 could be played but it's not a uh, so easy win but bishop on d7 is the move we are looking for and now uh, 
uh, why first of all have to move this rook? Uh, and, and this is what Firuja played. Actually, um, this is the strongest move. Uh, and Duda play rook on g6. And rook on g6 is not really the best. And uh, there are many strange moves here. So queen on e1 was recommended by the engine, but it doesn't give any any compensation. Black would just 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 easily win. Uh, rook on a6 uh, could be could be very very um, uh, interesting in the time trouble. So just reminder, both of the players has about six minutes on the clock. And now after rook on a6. If Firuja play a queen on b2, actually it would be a draw. And it would be a draw for some specific reason. Bishop on e2 would be very, very strong now. And now rook can't take on e2 because white actually winning. Queen h6 and that would be a checkmate here. Uh, for example, king on f7, queen on g6, uh, king on e7, now queen g5 uh, picking up the material, king f7, now queen g6, king e7, queen e4 with check again, uh, king f7 and now queen f4. Uh, and king e7 and uh, now the point is uh, this is very dangerous. Uh, taking on f2 and uh, after picking up by the queen now this is very dangerous attacking the um, the king so uh, white would lose but after rook on a2 everything is okay for white and now if queen takes on a2 actually we would have queen on e5 with check king f8 and now that would be just you know checkmate so uh, black would have to be very very careful and of course uh, this bishop don't need to be taken rook can be taken but um, are you sure that would be the same problem here uh, after taking a rook queen h6 just the checkmate is much faster king f7 queen g6 and uh, now king e7 queen f6 and king e8 and now bishop h5 with checkmate. So as you see after rook a6 black would have the problem. So we know already that queen on b2 just doesn't work. Uh, what about rook on f2 with check? This is much better. King on f2 of course uh, is playable and now if queen on b2 it looks very strong but again it doesn't win. It doesn't win really the same problem bishop on e2 and now we still have this attack on h6 uh, and if rook on h8 trying to defend actually white wins again now queen on e4 is extremely strong rook f8 with check now king g1 and if you count the pieces actually uh, white have extra rook uh, and this rook can't be taken because now we have mating ideas here. So uh, black are just losing. Uh, so after bishop on e2, rook on f8 would have to be played just to draw. So black would only draw if playing correctly. King g1, queen c1, king g2. Now rook f2 would have to be sacrificed, the only move for black and just to just to you know draw uh, and after picking up the the queen uh, white can uh, actually pick up the the pawn and this is the totally drawing um, drawing end game with uh, the same amount of the of the pawns and, uh, and yeah the players could try to to do something but but that's uh, actually just a draw uh, so uh, as you see after rook on a6, uh, rook on f2, uh, king f2, queen b2 would not work. So Firuja would have to find with just you know a couple minutes on the on the clock, rook on f8 the only move, uh, and then king on g1. Now queen on g3 with check, uh, queen g2. Now queen e3 check, king h1, now queen e1 with check, king h2 and only now rook on f2. 
Uh, and what white can do is just connect the rooks, but uh, queen f1 attacking the, the queen uh, and queen can be supported because of the of the pawn on e4 and also can be supported this way because of checkmate. Uh, so queen would have to take on f2, queen f2, king h1, the only move and now whatever, queen h4, picking up the bishop and of course winning the game with two extra pawn and the minor piece. So that would be the only winning. So uh, in my opinion, rook on e6 would be would be very very complicated move and very complex maybe Firuzia would fall for that maybe not uh, but after rook on g6 by duda actually Firuzia just play king on h7 and now here is the problem bishop on e2 doesn't work anymore because the rook can be just picked up by the king so um, duda try queen on c1 uh, attacking the rook the problem is Bishop on e8, creating the threat of picking up this rook uh, and also connecting the rook. So there are no threats by white. Uh, we have rook on a5 and trying by Duda, but queen on a5. Very simple. Queen c4, this is the last chance, creating some, um, you know, mating threat uh, with just, you know, uh, one or two minutes on the clock. But simply Firuzia found the strongest move rook on f2 check we have king on f2 and queen f5 ending the game now we have check and of course attack on the rook and it's um, double attack so there are no tricks and in this position young Krzysztof duda resign the game and as i said there are there are totally no tricks uh, king has to move so king g2 and now bishop takes on g six and queen on c7 check and attack on the rook also doesn't work because rook can simply go to d7 and rook is of course protected bishop on g6 and of course not queen but king takes on g6 and there are no more tricks um, so this is why in this position actually uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda just resigned the game so very interesting game by Jan Krzysztof Duda and Young Alireza Firuzia. They always produce interesting games, uh, ever, always exciting. They never play boring openings. Um, this is why this is good chess show. However, after this knight on g5 and knight h3, Ali Reza Firuzia got the initiative and uh, he keep it until the end. Uh, Duda tried to um, fight back, but uh, it was not enough um, for a young Iranian grandmaster. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, press a like. If you don't like this video for some reason, press unlike. Uh, leave the comment if you like this game. And of course, subscribe if you don't want to miss any other games from Practice Festival 2020 and others video I'm gonna upload soon. And yeah, again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.